In this lesson, we will look at how aircraft are refueled and at the regulations that help to keep the refueling operations safe. Light aircraft are refueled by removing the tank filler caps in the wing upper surface and pumping fuel from the dispensing unit into the tanks. This is known as the overwing method. The quantity of fuel delivered in litres or gallons is indicated on a gauge on the delivery vehicle. Practically all modern jet-engined aircraft are pressure refueled from hydrants or delivery vehicles through underwing, refuel and defuel coupling points. The operation is controlled from a single external refuel control panel. An example of an external refuel control panel for a jet-engined aircraft is shown here. This particular aircraft has three fuel tanks. The quantity of fuel in each tank in thousands of kilograms is displayed here. The blue high-level light will illuminate to indicate that the high-level float switch has operated to close the refuel valve because the tank is full. Each fuel tank has a three-position refuel valve switch. The switches are guarded to the normal position. With its switch in normal, a tank's refuel valve is controlled by the automatic refueling computer. The open position opens the refueling valve unless the tank is full. In this case, the high-level float switch or volumetric top-off unit will close the valve and the associated high-level light will come on. In the shut position, the associated refuel valve will remain closed. The three-position mode select switch is guarded to the off position. With the switch in this position, the refuel system is de-energized and the refuel valves are closed. With the switch to refuel, the refuel valves can be controlled either by their individual switches or the automatic refueling computer. With the switch to the defuel transfer, the transfer valve will open to allow fuel to be pumped from the tanks back into the tanker. The amber open light will illuminate. The test switch is a three position switch spring loaded to the center off position. When it is held to the high level position, operation of the high level float switches or volumetric top off units is tested. If they are serviceable, the blue high level lights will illuminate. The lights position tests all of the lights and puts eights in all of the quantity windows. The pre-selected fuel quantity is shown in this window. It can be changed using the rocker switch. The total fuel on board is shown here. The end light illuminates when automatic refueling is complete. Having connected the refueling supply, the normal method of refueling would be to pre-select the required fuel load. Ensure that all three refuel valves are in the normal position. Then move the mode selector to Refuel. The automatic refueling system will now refuel each tank in the correct sequence to achieve the pre-selected fuel load. When refueling is complete, the pre-selected and actual windows will read the same and the end light will come on. The mode select switch should now be returned to the OFF position.
fueling vehicles and hydrants dispensing AVTA are identified by prominently placed labels with the words Jet A, Jet A1, or Jet B, depending on the grade, printed in white on a black background. Fueling vehicles dispensing AVGAS are identified by prominently placed labels with the word AVGAS and the grade, for instance 100LL, printed in white on a red background. Before refueling an aircraft, fueling zones must be established. These zones will extend at least 6 metres or 20 feet radially from the filling and venting points on the aircraft and the fueling equipment, covering all areas where fuel vapour may be expelled during refueling. Within these zones, the following restrictions apply. There must be no smoking. The use of photographic flash bulbs or electronic flash equipment is not permitted. If the exhaust of an auxiliary power unit or APU, which is required during the refueling operation, discharges into a fueling zone, then it must be started before filler caps are removed or fueling connections made. If the APU stops for any reason during refueling, it should not be started again until fueling has ceased and there is no danger of igniting the fuel vapours. Electrical ground power units or GPUs should be located as far away as practically possible from the fueling zones and not be connected or disconnected while fueling is in progress. Only authorised personnel and vehicles should be allowed within the refueling zones and their number should be kept to a minimum. Before refueling commences, the aircraft must be bonded to the fueling equipment using dedicated wires and clips. This ensures that there is no electrical potential difference between the components which could lead to sparks. Reliance must not be placed upon conductive hoses for effective bonding. When overwing refueling, the hose nozzle must be bonded to the aircraft structure before removing the tank filler cap. Similarly, any funnels, filters or cans that are used must be bonded to the aircraft. Plastic funnels or pipes must never be used. When underwing pressure refueling, the mechanical metal to metal contact between the aircraft fitting and the nozzle end eliminates the need for a separate hose end bonding cable. There are a large number of precautions which need to be taken during refueling. Here are the precautions that are most relevant to the flight crew. In case the aircraft settles on the landing gear as the weight increases, all ground equipment should be moved clear of the underside of the aircraft. The main engines should not be operated. Strobe lighting should not be used. All torches and lamps used within the refueling zones should be either certified as being flameproof or be of the intrinsically safe type. The sequence of refueling the aircraft tanks can adversely affect the aircraft's centre of gravity position, particularly if the correct filling sequence is not followed and or the aircraft has a vertical or horizontal stabiliser tank. If any doubt exists about the correct refueling sequence, the aircraft refueling manual must be consulted. Fire extinguishers should be located so as to be readily available. There are a number of special hazards that need to be looked out for during refueling operations. Aircraft should not be refueled within 30 meters or 100 feet of radar equipment, either under test or in use, in either aircraft or ground installations. If the landing gear is overheated, 
The aerodrome fire service should be called and no refueling should be carried out until the heat has dissipated. Extreme caution should be exercised during electrical storms. Fueling operations should be suspended during severe electrical disturbances in the vicinity of the airfield. To reduce turnaround time, and for security reasons, the regulations permit airline operators of fixed-wing aircraft to allow passengers to embark, disembark, or remain on board during fueling operations, provided the following safety procedures are followed. It is not permissible to refuel fixed-wing aircraft with less than 20 seats while passengers remain on board. Passengers must disembark if Avgas or Jet B is being used. One qualified person must remain at a specified location during refueling operations with passengers on board. This qualified person must be capable of handling emergency procedures concerning fire protection and firefighting, handling communications, and initiating and directing an evacuation. Crew staff and passengers must be warned that refueling is about to take place. Seatbelt signs must be off. The no smoking signs must be on together with the interior lighting to enable emergency exits to be identified. Passengers must be instructed to unfasten their seatbelts and refrain from smoking. Sufficient qualified personnel must be on board and be prepared for an immediate evacuation. If the presence of fuel vapour is detected inside the aircraft, or any other hazard arises during refuelling, fuelling must be stopped immediately. The ground area beneath the exits, intended for emergency evacuation and slide deployment areas, must be kept clear. When passengers are embarking or disembarking during fueling operations, they should do so under the supervision of an airline official and their route should avoid the fueling zones. These safety procedures are important. Spend a moment studying them. Click to continue when you are ready. That is the end of the lesson. The points to remember are that light aircraft may be refueled by the overwing method, but practically all transport jet aircraft are pressure refueled through a single point, normally under the wing. When overwing refueling, the hose nozzle must be bonded to the aircraft structure before removing the tank filler cap. Here on screen is a list of the safety precautions that should be taken during refueling. Click to continue when you have finished studying them. Finally, here is a summary of the regulations governing refueling with passengers on board.